Most Amazing Top 10 family. I'm your host, Che Dorena, and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. H.P. Lovecraft is one of the classic horror creators, and fans of the grim and goth have praised him for decades. I mean, who doesn't know Cthulhu? And even if these creatures seem to be figments of a writer who is obsessed with the dark reaches of space and the slimy depths of the ocean, what if his creations are based on more fact than fiction? I'm exploring this possibility with today's list of top 10 scary Lovecraft monsters spotted in real life. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. And stick around for the whole list because I'm going to be doing some more pet shoutouts which you guys love so much. If any of you at home need some more Most Amazing Top 10 content, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We are starting to do Facebook exclusive content and we also have a contest going on this month. Each Friday we are going to be giving away a prize. Our prize this Friday is a Nintendo Switch. That's what we're giving away. The way you enter yourself in the contest is you need to go to Landon's Instagram page. You need to follow him on Instagram and then you need to like and comment on his most recent contest post. You guys want to win a Switch? It's that easy. Anyone at home who's interested in grabbing some top 10 merch, check out the link below. Use the offer code MA10 to get $5 off, which means you grab a shirt for only 10 bucks, which is a sweet deal. And without taking any longer, let's get into this list. At number 10, we have Kasagatha, a giant ball of tentacles from a cosmic world too insane for our minds to understand. She is one of the oldest beings in the universe and is known for having a fierce temper. It's said that she can use her tentacles to reach out and pluck any living thing from its home and devour it in one bite. And if that wasn't enough to freak you out, I have a video that might be this queen of terror flying through earth. Wow, that looked terrifying. If I ever saw something like that coming in a fog, I think I would just go back inside and watch Infinity War again. I'd be like, yeah, that's how I wanna go up. I don't have any choice right now, I'm gonna die doing this. And of course, there's a good chance that this video is edited, but what's the fun in that? Let's believe together that there's a giant squid monster out there that would kill any of us in a moment and can make you drift into madness just from looking at it. That's cool. And number nine, we have Ganast. The Ganast are some of the smaller creations from the Lovecraftian universe. They have long, slim arms and legs. Kind of like a slender man crossed between some sort of feral dude. They also have humanoid faces but lacking noses and ears. They have sharpened teeth and kangaroo-like legs with hooves for feet. Their bodies are hairless and their skin is pale white. They are about the same size as a man and all these characteristics sound very similar to the extremely popular creepypasta, The Rake. There are so many similarities between these two monstrosities and there is a ton of online reports of people seeing the rake in real life or being attacked by this creature. So most of you are like, well those are fake. But if even and one of them is true, we might have a nast running around trying to kill people and it just has been named something else for a new generation. At number eight, we have the deep ones. Fish-like humanoids that look a lot like the King Zora from Legend of Zelda or Green of Time. They will sometimes mate with humans who they find wandering by large bodies of water. But I can't imagine these creatures would be that sexy. In other words, you wouldn't want them to swim up to you and give you a nice fishy cold kiss unless you want to know what the ocean tastes like. Ugh. They live deep underwater and worship the fish god Dagon. With their fishy features and interest in mating with people, it sounds a lot like mermaids. Basically, they all do the same things. And mermaids have been sighted and reported throughout history. In the 17th century, Captain Richard Whitbourne reported seeing mermaids off the coast of Newfoundland. He said that they were beautiful and they would try to seduce him. Sounds a lot like the deep ones. All these underwater creatures are a horny bunch, that's for sure. At number seven, we have Dagon. Dagon? 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 Correct me in the comments. This massive immortal fish who the Deep Ones pray to. He is their god and due to his massive size and power, he has earned the right to be worshiped. He is an old great one. He belongs to the same family as the Lovecraft superstar Cthulhu. It is his destiny to mate with Mother Hydra. I assume to make a lot more crazy fish monsters that would take over the world. And we might have some footage of him for you. footage was from a hurricane moving through Miami and if I was a giant cosmic fish monster I would say that a massive storm would be my main form of transportation. Also that noise it makes is terrifying. Like most mythical creatures there isn't a clear shot of it. Maybe they all have a hidden power to blur themselves out of any sort of footage. The good news is that if Dagon is real he likes to be worshipped so we can make some sort of deal with him. We pray to you, you don't kill humanity, everybody wins. 
At number six, we have Migos. These guys are trippy and have a lot going on. They look like some sort of crustacean that has reproduced with a fungus and then sprouted wasp wings. They are extremely intelligent and able to travel through the solar system and beyond with ease. They take humans from Earth and transport them to Pluto and remove their brains. They worship the old gods and once waged war on the elder things prior to humans walking the Earth. Their appearance being crossed between an insect and a fungus reminds me of something that still exists here on Earth. Let's have a look at this. From this bulbous container, spores will be cast into the air currents, where they will claim more ant victims. But it's not just ants. Many others are infected by the cordyceps fungus. That was the cordyceps fungus. It infects insects, driving their minds crazy until they die. Then the fungus will grow out of their dead bodies, spreading to other insects. These deformed corpses of insects look very close to the description of the Migos. The Migos existed on Earth long before people ever walked the Earth, and there are some biologists who think that fungus are even older than the Earth and that they could have come from space. Could this fungus be a descendant of the Lovecraftian monster, slowly getting stronger, taking over minds one by one until it's able to re reclaim the earth and return to its final form. At number five, we have the Night Gaunts. These are demonic looking creatures that have featureless faces, dark thick skin, large bat like wings, and clawed hands. Nightmares of these creatures would torment H.P. Lovecraft when he was a child. I would assume that Lovecraft had a mind for the dark and twisted from an early age, and that's how he was able to come up with so many terrifying beasties. The description of these creatures seems to be very similar to many beings that have been mentioned throughout history, like gargoyles, demonic winged creatures that would come alive only at night sometimes to snatch away children, or even demons from the Bible flying out of fiery hell to consume the people of Earth and spread darkness. Maybe all the nightmarish night gaunts that Lovecraft saw when he was a child weren't just in his head, but they were really tormenting him, trying to take him away and corrupt his soul. He had to tell himself that they were just part of his imagination so he could stay sane. Now a few viewers are going to grow up with a fear of gargoyles and then remember this video 15 years from now when they're in therapy. At number four, we have the Gloon. A trickster and a horror. Gloon originally presented itself to man in the form of the Greek god of wine, Dionysus. But it didn't take long for his true form to come out and terrify his victims. Its real form is that of a giant slug with thick skin and a body that is long and grotesque. It is able to manipulate the minds of the people around him either for consumption, worship, or to do its bidding. It's said that Gloon has been locked away in the sunken city of Atlantis but is still able to use its powers to manipulate people. It will force them to walk into the ocean and drown them. Themselves. This is the beast's helpless attempt at trying to get some poor soul to free it from its prison. There have been tales of demons that walk around in the forests of Peru. They will find people who are sleeping, whisper to them in their sleep, and then lead them to water. It's said that the demon will then drown them and then take them to their underwater world. This could be Gloon using its powers to try and free itself. Let's hope it stays locked up. At number three, we have Nyarlathotep. He is also one of the great cosmic gods of the Lovecraftian universe, but what makes him so much more dangerous than the rest of the ones we have gone over so far is that he is not asleep. The other gods stay in a constant hibernation, but not Nyarlathotep. He has been banished from Earth, but that doesn't mean he won't use his great power to visit the Earth in various ways. It's said that he has a thousand other forms. He usually comes to Earth in the form of a pharaoh or leader of a cult, someone to gain praise from followers and try to increase his power. So perhaps. Perhaps we have seen him, we just never knew it. Some cults that have popped up throughout history could have been the great god in disguise. The infamous cult leader Jim Jones talked of alien beings and how his followers' souls would be transported into space. Could this have been the work of the Lovecraftian monster all along? At number two on our list is Azeroth. This is probably the Lovecraftian monster that I am most afraid of. Azeroth is a cosmic being that sits at the center of the universe and is constantly lulled to sleep by the song of a powerful god. It's Azeroth who created the the universe and if he ever wakes up it will be he who ends it. His consciousness is life and death. Now how could anyone ever see something that sits at the center of the universe? Well if this creature exists then proof of it would be the Big Bang. The cosmic microwave signals that are picked up throughout the universe could be the murmurs of its sleep. Let's just hope that the being singing to it never loses its tune. And for our number one spot, we have Cthulhu. So I had two options here. I could have left Cthulhu off the list because everyone knows Cthulhu, or I could have just slapped him at number one. And I was like, dude, this guy's the poster boy for the whole brand of this genre of horror. And we might have a clip of him caught on camera.
He's got the wings, he's got the size, and he's making that horrible booming noise. A video like this is enough to make you go on a conspiracy theory deep dive. Out of all the footage I've shown you so far, I would say that I believe this one is real the most. It just kind of looks like the real thing. Of course, if it is real, you better put a squid on your head and start praying to your new god, because all the other ones are dead. Let me know in the comments which one of these monsters you're most likely to pray to. All right, everyone, that is our list. And as promised, I'm going to be doing some more pet shout outs. If you want me to shout out your pet, you can hit me up on Instagram. I pick new pets every day. So if you don't get picked one day, you can message back another day. It's totally fine. If it takes me a little while to get to you, I am sorry. I got a lot of these to do. And also, make sure you send me a high res pick. I don't take them if they're like low res, like fuzzy, blurry images. Got to be a nice pick of your pet. And without taking any longer, let's shout out some pets. First, we have Nico's dog, Chico. Their names rhyme. They should become a crime fighting duo. Juliana sent in a picture of her dog, Nala. What are you doing with those scissors, buddy? Please put them down. Next, we have Kevin's macaw, Zoopy. Dude, that bird is so blue. I want to paint my non-existent house that color. That bird is beautiful. Then we have the little king, Nacho. This little dude deserves his position as king. Look how cute he is. Sarah sent in Brocket. This dog has a great personality and a great haircut. And finally, Jordan sent a picture of his budgie, Joey, and his doggo, Roxy. Both of them are cuties. You have a great team over there. All right, everyone, that is our list. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Also, if you want more Most Amazing Top 10 content, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And don't forget about the contest. Go to Landon's page, like, comment on the most recent photo, and follow him. That'll get you in a contest to win a Nintendo Switch. It's huge. Until next time, I've been Shade Rain, and hopefully we don't all get eaten by a Lovecraftian monster. Uh, that would suck. The good news is that Dagon. The good news is if Dagon is real. Dagon. Let me say Dagon. I'm mixing it up. I don't give a. F their appearance. Ha their appearance. <laughs> a video like this is enough to make.